father of Galera, son Winkler, and Cardinal Fane, and Goddy, and Ocot Starul Shaw, it's a Kavan in you. On behalf of Cardinal Fane Community Development Association, I would like to extend a Cade Meal of Father to everyone, and especially to Professor Timothy Madigan, Rochester, New York State to Lieutenant Colonel Sean Coston of the US Embassy in Dublin and to uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Curran, uh, Irish Army and to Mr Michael Ring, Minister for Tourism and Sport and there are many other dignitaries like our own Joe mm. and uh, from uh, Europe and so on uh, and all of the other people from the County Council I'd be listing them for the afternoon and the evening if I went on. Anyway, just to say that you are all very welcome and all the other dignitaries and I'd like to include in a very special way the members of the O'Rourke's and the Smith families and so on who are here who would claim a bloodline with the man that we are honouring this afternoon here. We are gathered here today to honour the local boy, Patrick Henry O'Rourke, who left this place just behind us as a young boy for the US in about 1838. And although he was to die on a battlefield uh, of Gettysburg on July the 2nd, 1863, at the young age of 26, his memory is still evergreen in the country of his adoption because of his outstanding service to that country. The family eventually settled in upstate New York in the city of Rochester, close to Lake Ontario. The city still honours his heritage <coughs> and reveres his burial place. I had the privilege six years ago of standing beside the monument to him on the battlefield of Gettysburg on Little Round Top Hill, where he was killed, leading his regiment to save the hill which was in grave danger of being captured by the Confederates. And that would have had disastrous consequences for the Union Army and yet another lost battle for them. His bravery and that of his men saved the hill, but it cost O'Rourke his life, shot through the neck. His body was brought back to the church of in Rochester for his funeral, where his young wife, Clara Bishop, awaited him. They had been married in that church just one year before. Shortly after his funeral, just as a little addendum, Clara joined the convent and became a nun. A small stone which I, bought which I brought back from Little Round Top is kept in Cornet National School where the pupils study uh, Colonel Patrick Henry O'Rourke as part of their <coughs> local history, which is very nice to, uh, for them to know the link. In 2002, our chairman, who is here this evening, and you'll see him at the more la later on in the ceremony, Des Harrington, visited Rochester and saw for himself the work in progress on the O'Rourke Bridge and Highway. As a, result of our as a result, our association sent a beautiful inscribed stone to link our two areas, and the inscription on that stone today reads, This stone is from the birthplace of Colonel Patrick Henry O'Rourke, at Drumbess, Cornafane, County Cavan, Ireland, presented by the people of his home area in the year 2004. Gomara or Leacra Gobor. And for our visitors, that means may our heroes live forever. <coughs> this stone is incorporated into the control tower of the bridge <coughs> and continues our link with the place where Patrick O'Rourke grew up went to school and military college and where today in his grave in Rochester Cemetery he awaits the resurrection. After the unveiling a plaque, uh, of the plaque, Des will make a presentation to Professor Madigan as a further cementing of our link with Rochester and we hope that this monument here, the stone on the bridge uh, in Rochester itself, will continue the memory and the link between the two places and maybe for our area here begin a little uh, part of the tourism that we could probably take part in. Gorabila Mahagwiv Golea. Thank you, Jim, for a fantastic speech. I now call on Professor Timothy Madigan from the Colonel O'Rourke Memorial Society and St. John Fisher College, New York. Thank you very much. It is a great honor to be here, and I'm delighted 
uh, to visit the birthplace of a great Irishman and a great American, Colonel Patrick O'Rourke. Uh, I do hope that this will be a further uh, connection between an ongoing relationship uh, between our two <coughs> cities. As you know, Colonel O'Rourke moved to my city of Rochester, New York when he was a child, as did so many other people from Ireland to uh, escape the, uh, the famine. Uh, he went to West Point where he graduated with high honors, the first in his class, and he fought for his country during the American Civil War, a very sad time. Half of the graduates of his class went to fight for the Confederacy, the other half for the Union. So it was a, a horrible time in our history, but he fought with tremendous distinction and uh, at arguably the greatest and most decisive battle of the war, Gettysburg. And as was mentioned, on July 2nd, 19, uh, 1863, he gave his life at the Battle of Little Round Top. Uh, defending it successfully, and it was certainly a turning point of the war. I wanted to mention that in Rochester there is the Colonel Patrick O'Rourke Memorial Society, of which I am a member, and in addition to the bridge which commemorates him uh, at my college, St. John Fisher College in Rochester, we have a bust of O'Rourke and a painting of O'Rourke at uh, Little Round Top. And this past July 2nd, we had a memorial service at Holy Sepulcher Cemetery where O'Rourke is buried. Uh, interestingly enough, another famous person buried there is Kate Wheelwright, the mother of Eamon de Valera. So it's a very uh, special cemetery indeed. And we were very uh, <coughs> grateful to be able to honor him on the 150th <coughs> anniversary of his death. In addition, in uh, September, for the 150th anniversary of the Gettysburg Address, which President Lincoln gave at that site, we had another service by the bust of Colonel O'Rourke. So my friends and associates back in Rochester are very happy uh, that I am here to represent them. The president of my college, Donald Bain, uh, Judge Richard Dollinger, uh, Tom O'Connell and others who are very active with that. And they did ask me to thank the Cornifane Society again for the wonderful plaque, which is very evident on the bridge. And I wanted everyone to know that on Saturday, October 4th of this year, we're going to have a rededication of the bridge for the 10th anniversary. And we're inviting everyone to come. So we hope that you will all come to the city where Patrick O'Rourke uh, came and, and is buried. And as the director of the Irish Studies program at my college, my greatest goal is to be able to continue the friendship between our countries on an individual basis. And I just wanted to add a personal note this is a very meaningful day for me as well because it also happens to be my birthday. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> I, I cannot think of a better way for me to celebrate it than in the land of my ancestors and to honor this great man. So thank you very much. I now call on Lieutenant Colonel Sean Costner to you at the present time. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Timothy. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. I'm calling the Lieutenant Sean Carlson, defense attaché with the U.S. Embassy, to say a few words. Thank you. Um, just thank you very much uh, for the invitation uh, to be here. Uh, I'm really honored uh, to be here. Uh, obviously, a lot of Americans we know about the. Uh, the history of the uh, the Irishmen that came and fought for the United States, uh, but I don't think a lot of us know how much they are celebrated and remembered uh, over here. And uh, I'll tell you a couple little st short story. How last uh, last summer uh, I was uh, out in County Mayo in um, in an old cemetery, really kind of in, felt like in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, weather beaten, gravestones everywhere, just touring, walking around, and uh, and the gleam of of black marble. If you will, caught my eye, so I went over there and checked. 
And here was a tombstone for uh, an Irishman that uh, fought and died uh, in the United States Army in Vietnam. Uh, by the time we left that ceremony, we found two others. One other who had uh, died in Vietnam, another one who fought in World War I. Um, and it was, it was really moving to me that um, his, his family, his friends, the people that remembered him back in Ireland had gone to the trouble to make sure that uh, uh, the honors that were bestowed upon him that, uh, that uh, they deserved. Uh, so again, on behalf, of the, uh, on behalf of the United States, on behalf of the U.S. military, on behalf of the American people, I just say thank you uh, so much for keeping those ties alive and uh, um, remembering um, the, the service that so many Irishmen have done for the United States military. Thank you. Now call on Lieutenant uh, Mark Hearns of the Irish Defence Force. A very new slug is the Cordy Galair, a Tahana, a Storm Freshen, a Tahan Shire, and a Okade Special, like a Star Rule in you. Um, I, hadn't been ex uh, I hadn't expected to be asked to say a few words, but having been asked, uh, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to take the uh, opportunity uh, to, thank, to thank you for inviting me to take part in this very important ceremony. Um, because uh, we're remembering not just a, a son uh, of Cavan, but also uh, you know a very special relationship between uh, the United States uh, and um, and Ireland. The United States has played a, a, a tremendous um, role uh, in in terms of our state in supporting you know the initial uh, fight for independence and the development of the state, and more recently the uh, the peace process. Uh, but the the people uh, from from this parish should be proud of uh, the role uh, that one of their uh, their own sons has played in this because it was mentioned earlier on by, by Professor Timothy what happened on uh, Little Round Top was enormously significant not just for that battle but for the conduct of the war and the bravery and the sacrifice made by the Irishmen uh, predominantly Irishmen of that unit uh, and, and Colonel O'Rourke himself uh, certainly won the day for the, the Union Army they were on the left hand uh, flank of the Union line at the time if they had lost that, that particular fight, the whole line would have been rolled up by the Confederate Army and the road to Washington was free. And history, as, as we know it, would have changed completely. And who knows, you know, uh, bring it back to my starting point, what, what that would have had on Ireland. So uh, you can be proud that the <coughs> of the parish has play, played a really key role in, uh, in, in not just American and not just local affairs, but in, in world affairs. So I'd like to thank you very much for inviting us and uh, the Defence Forces are always happy to support such a thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mark, I uh, appreciate we put you on the spot. It was a wonderful speech, quick thinking. Um, so just before I call on the Minister to form you unveil the, the, the memorial, I'd just like to thank a few people. I'd like to thank Brian Connolly of Cavan County Council for all the research he's done. Dermot Walsh as well. Dermot doesn't get mentioned too often. He does a lot of good community work behind the scenes. I'd also like to thank Sean Crotty and express the sympathy of everyone, the bereavement of his mother, and for all his support and cooperation. But there's two people I'd like to thank in particular, and on behalf of the Corn of or for the Corn of Fame Development Association, that's Jim Hannan and Desi Hannigan, or Harrington, sorry, Harrington. I suppose if the, if the Colonel is alive today and he's looking down at us, he'd be very proud of the spirit of Corn of Fame and the community spirit that you've done. And I think you've made this in this ceremony you've uplifted into something much more meaningful and much more stronger. And on behalf of the council, I'd like to thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> and I'll call on Minister Michael Ring to say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Deputy Joe Riley, MEP for Ray McGuinness, councillors, distinguished guests, our military <laughs> people. And first of all, do you know, I have to say it, Lieutenant Colonel, you know, you remind me of something and which I wasn't going to say, but I am going to say it, and I want to say it, because it's an unusual thing for my family. In 21, my granduncle, Brigadier General Joe Ring, got killed in the Civil War, rounding up the other side. And my grandfather actually died. Uh, he, was, he was in the American Army. When he was buried, he had the American flag actually put over his coffin and you're quite correct I uh, have to say that sometimes we forget about the traditions and the history what's going on in this country. First of all I want to say to all the previous speakers before I speak about that I want to compliment them yourself and everybody who spoke here today every single one of you it was you know you spoke very well uh, I had a speech done here from the department and everything that's in it has been said by you all but I'm just going to add a few words I have to say when you look at it Patrick O'Rourke left a little village like this 
and they were here and he immigrated to America like many thousand more immigrants over the years and years to America and Britain and all over the world and like many many more Irish people he did the country proud and he did the country that he adopted proud as well and we're very proud to be here today and I know there's members of the, the Iraq family that are, have a connection with them and Professor Madigan I want to say to you uh, we're very delighted to have you here today uh, as Minister for Tourism I would hope that you would be able to bring many thousand Americans to come, <laughs> and see, to, come and see, to come and see this flag. I don't mind to invite our people over, but I get no credit for that. <laughs> I will get credit for anyone that you bring into the country. To our two military gentlemen here today, I want to thank them for their service to both countries, to America and to Ireland. We're very lucky in this country since the foundation of the state. My granduncle, Joe Ring, helped to set up the Garda Shia Kona. And if you read the back on the record from the Foundation of State Theatre Tree, he got honourable mention. And as I say, my grandfather was in the American Army. And it is, you know, great that people give service to the country. Sometimes we have a critic you know, we have a critical of certain countries, the way they have to go in and you know, uh, you know, I suppose use their, their soldiers, their sons and daughters to die in other countries for other wars, and they've done that. And I have to say that about the American Army. We have a lot of criticism sometimes about America and about their presidents and about wars and everything else. But you know, when there's a war going on in Europe and there's wars going on elsewhere, the first people to call it is their own Irish army or they want the American army to go in and support them and help them and to make sure that people are defended and their rights are defended. And I compliment the Irish army and I compliment the American army for the work and the world of peace that they've done. And I know that there are times that they have to do what has to be done to make sure that we have peace in our world and particularly here in this country. To every involved in this event today, I want to thank you all for coming here. It's late in the evening, and it's great as a community to be able to unveil a pact to one of our own who has served another country and served as well. And as I said, many of our immigrants had to leave these shores and are still leaving these shores. But there's one thing about Irish people, no matter what part of the world they go, they're always number one. And Patrick O'Rourke was number one when he went to the college. And all I can say, there were thousands upon thousands of Americans, there were thousands and thousands of other nationalities, but who came number one? Patrick O'Rourke from Ireland. And we're very proud of him today, and we're very proud to, to be to belong to this flag. I want to thank the County Council, and I want to thank everybody involved in this today. It's great to remember back. We have to think forward, but we always have to remember the past. As a historian here today will tell you, you always have to look back to look forward. And today is a good day for this community. I'm honoured to be here to unveil this flag. I want to thank our visitors that have come from abroad, and I want to thank everybody that turned out here this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> from five down for us. Yeah, okay. <coughs> five.
Amazing. Front, if you do it in front of the... Yeah, can I get you to come down? Desi, yes, you do it in front of the... Yeah. <coughs> Development Association. I would like I to present... Just back this and just get a picture. To present you with this. Uh, cross. It's made from sycamore. This is part of, of the, the sycamore trees. This is uh, the, one of the, uh, our, the, the oldest living sycamore in Ireland. It was planted in Kilmore Church of Ireland Cathedral by Bishop William Bedell in 1632, and uh, it's still it's still living. This is part of a windfall that, that uh, happened about six or eight years ago, and uh, the tree actually was sold for firewood, and I retrieved it. And uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful wood, and this is part of it's in the base of Florence Court U. Special U tree. So um, that's basically. Yeah, yes. Bishop Bidell was. Bishop Bidell <coughs> was born in Blacknockley in, in, in England and he was the provost of Trinity College and he then came to Kilmore uh, as bishop and um, he was a man of the people. He got a military funeral too when 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 by he died O'Reilly's. by the O'Reillys. Uh, he was a, a prisoner in Clarota Castle and uh, in the 1641 rebellion but he 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 got a a, a, a massive send off you know from the locals and he's buried in Kilmore Church of Ireland along with his wife and son so that's that's it it's it's that's part of the Bedell tree and I know it's going to be cherished by Professor Madigan so out in Rochester so that's that's it okay okay so earlier in the day Minister Ring was in Coothill and he launched the Cavan Walking Festival but now we're in the middle of Drum Bess near Cornifane in Cavan and uh, the Minister is here to unveil the plaque to uh, Colonel O'Rourke that's correct you're very welcome to hear that you are in the middle of the country here today well, the real country well all I can say is it is beautiful and I mean yeah. you're quite correct in the middle country uh, Lieutenant Colonel Patrick O'Rourke as you know he was like many many immigrants that went abroad and went to America but he served in, in the American Army and, f and fought in the American Civil War. And it's great to be here today to, to honour him. A an Irish man, you know, like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Irish people that went all over the world. He went into to, to college in America, came number one in the military uh, college and then went on to fight in, in, in the American Civil War. We're glad to see him being honoured here today because he al has already been honoured in America. As you said, earlier on I was down launching the, the, the walking festival and I was very pleased to be at that. It was a, 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 it's a great event. And as I said when I was speaking there, it's great to see so many people out there participating now, walking, cycling and being healthier. Okay, so the plaque to Colonel O'Rourke, Colonel Patrick, in memory of Colonel Patrick O'Rourke, has just been unveiled. And here we have the people who were responsible for the hard work to do with that. I have Desi Harrington and Professor Timothy Madigan and Jim Hannon from Cornifane. Okay, Desi, you made a fantastic presentation there uh, to uh, Professor Madigan. And um, who made it? Who, who sculpted that? A gentleman from County Fermanagh, mm. a friend and... Uh, he, that's a piece of Florence. Yes, tell us about the, tell us about the wood. It's quite unique. The wood, <coughs> the wood is is um, part of the Bedell tree. Bishop William Bedell planted that tree in 1632. He was the bishop of Kilmore Church of Ireland, and um, um, he was instrumental in translating the Bible into Irish. And um, that tree was planted in 1632 and he died in 1638 mm. and that tree still lives and only there was remedial work done on it um, about 80 years ago it would be totally rotten mm. but um, 
that's part of a so windfall. Tassing is built as a sculpture on the Kel is it a Celtic, Celtic cross, cross design? Yes, yes. Fantastic. Celtic and this design. is a different piece of wood here. That's, that's yes, from, from Florence, Florence Court. Court. That's a, a U part. Of, mm. It's a U tree, part of Florence Court. A very um, sought after wood. So you have to you. bring this all this way back to Rochester. That's a pride we will, of place. We will make it so. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Jim, you are very much uh, the historian of the area down here. Very, you, you must know everything in great detail down here. Well, I know a good deal about Patrick Henry O'Rourke because of the simple fact that we had done that stone for the new bridge over in Rochford, which was opened there in 2004. And uh, as a result of that then, when I was in America, I made a point of going to Gettysburg and actually had the privilege of standing on the spot where he was killed, where there is a bust of his there in a stone, uh, upright stone. And uh, I learned then at the interpretive centre that he is a very high profile person on the battlefield. Now he's only one of many Irish monuments that are there because the profile of the Irish in that battle was indeed very great but the action that Patrick Henry O'Rourke from Drumbessier did on that day saved Round Top Hill and with the saving of Round Top Hill the battle was saved because if the Confederates had taken the hill, they would have just mowed the Union line out of it because of that position, and they would have okay, lost so that's again. The history of the battle. Mm -hmm. and that's fascinating stuff. I'm sure this is going to be documented somewhere along the line so that people can read it, will it be, at some stage? Well, the children it's in the school know it because mm -hmm. I go in there and they do it, and as I said there, they do it as part of their local history and so on. So okay. they're very aware of his profile in the okay. Civil War. Okay. So Professor Maddock, and you are somewhat responsible for the research of him back in America, weren't you? Well, yes, there is a Patrick O'Rourke Memorial Committee in uh, Rochester, New York, of which I'm a member, and we've done a great deal to keep his name alive. There is a, as was mentioned, a, a wonderful bridge in Rochester named in his honor. We have a ceremony at his gravesite, and at my college, St. John Fisher College, we have a bust of O'Rourke and a painting of him at Little Round Top. And why do you think that in particular they took such great proud in this Patrick O'Rourke? Well, he was a man uh, who gave his life for his adopted country, mm -hmm. and I think uh, that in and of itself is a reason that he needs to be commemorated. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're here at the site in which he was born uh, is very important. And of course, like so many people from Ireland, uh, he had to leave this country because of the sad conditions at the time. And although he loved America, I'm sure he would have preferred as so many other Irish if they didn't have to leave. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that we know the reasons that he came to America. Yeah, I think it's great to see as well that, uh, you know, Irish went to America and we built up a great rapport with America. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you come back here and you're building up, you know, you're coming back and seeing what it's like here for us now too. So that's great, both mm -hmm. sides and sharing both sides. Okay, so well done. Thanks so to everybody. The, 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 as, Des, as like professor did say that the, they built a, a new bridge in honour of Colonel Patrick in Rochester, uh, up New York, and I had the privilege to be there at, when it was being built, and I got a grand tour of the bridge by the, the uh, chief engineer, Bo Mazur, and um, other dignitaries, and was looked after extremely well. That was in 2002. The bridge yeah. was officially opened in 2004, and has been rededicated in this on the 4th of October this year, the 10th anniversary. Okay. Yeah. So you got anything you'd like to say now? Finally? Well, just that we sent the plaque from this area here when they were opening the bridge in 2004. And uh, I read there the inscription that we put on it and so on. You have it there, whoever has the... Uh, the paper and so, so on of, of and so area. on from the people of the area so this a monument here kind of cements the link between yeah. Rochester yeah. and Drumbess it's, nice. from yes. it's, it's a lovely it's idea yeah. and then into yeah. the and wheelers. then sending this historic Back, piece fantastic. Of, uh, a, a, a and thus is the, um, the the feeling and the emotion between the American and the Irish people as well I would yeah. like to think okay so. it yeah. has to be said as well that it was people like Colonel Patrick Henry O'Rourke by their sacrifice won the status that the Irish people subsequently had and still have in yeah. the United 
United States. It was his sacrifice and that of many others mm -hmm. who right. bought that for the Irish because they weren't in good standing before that. Okay, very well, thank good. you very much. You're thank very you, uh, Jim. And I'd like to say, enjoy your, your trip to Ireland. I, I'm enjoying it immensely. <laughs> <laughs> It's this man's birthday. birthday. Yes, yeah. and happy birthday as well. This was a wonderful birthday. We'll raise a glass to you. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll sh say, Shos Lanch and Avar is come more than a man of a joke. He has a health to the men and may the, the women, women live forever. forever. <laughs> <laughs>